um, that allows you to enter into private schools around New York. Um, for example, I also took the ISEE when I was attempting to enter into um, high school and middle school. So um, the ISCE, you can take it at the lower, middle, and upper level, but right now we are focusing on the upper level exam. So can you do the share screen? I just want the parents to also follow along with the share screen. So we'll have Absolutely. It. I'm going to share on my iPad so you all can see. Um, um, and those of you who are asking about the file and the format, we are going to be able to give that at the end of this webinar. We are going to be able to email that stuff over to all the participants so you'll have it. Thank you, Ritu. Thank you, JP. Thank you for the support, guys. We're really glad that you're part of this webinar right now. So we're just getting the share screen started. Good. So Kai, you seem to be muted on the share screen. So give me a moment to figure out how to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you great. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So should I give you guys a little introduction on what the exam is or yeah. should we just get started? Hey, yeah. Okay, can cool. you just make this, make this a little bit larger so we can see it more? Absolutely. I kind of wanted to go to this part. Okay. So the IB exam um, really just is what is what people use to get into um, private schools. Um, they have the lower level exam, which is designed um, for students in grades um, in fourth grade seeking admissions, like who are seeking admission into, sorry, students seeking admission to grade five or six take the lower level exam. Students who are looking for admission in grades seven or eight take the middle level exam. And students who are seeking admission into high schools um, or for grades nine through 12 take the upper level exam. And you can register to take it three times in a 12 month cycle or every year. And they, they offer them in three different seasons. They have the fall, the winter, and the spring or summer. Um, yeah, so they have five different sections, verbal reasoning, quantitative reasoning, reading comprehension, and ma mathematics achievement, and an essay. Um, so with that being said, I just wanted to go over, okay, the time commitments for the exam. So for the verbal reasoning section on up in the upper level ISCE, um, you have 40 um, questions and 20 minutes. So it's really a time crunch. They want to see how much you can get done in the time allotted. Um, and then in the quantitative reasoning, um, you have 37 questions in 35 minutes. So a little bit less than a minute per question. Um, if you guys want to take screenshots of this just to like decompress later, you're welcome to do that. We are going to have the recording, but the screenshots will be really helpful just as you're going through the class. Mm -hmm. Your reading comprehension section, um, 36 questions, 35 minutes and your mathematics achievement, 47 questions in 40 minutes. So never, there's not one section that gives you a little bit more time than there are questions. Um, so that is really important to note in terms of how to organize yourself during the exam and how to pace yourself. All right. Now, I think what would be really beneficial is if we went right into just going over some questions. I'm going to start with reading. Is that okay with you, Francis? Yeah, I do. And I want to, before we go uh, kind of jump into this, I want to remind all of you, if you are preparing for the upper level IC exam, remember that a lot of this material you will also see on the SHSAT, on the Bard High School Early College Entrance Exam, um, on the S. SAT, which is a very popular exam for boarding schools and private schools. So I just want to remind all of you that you're going to see these questions not only in one area, but you'll see them in more than one area over and over again. So please keep that in mind. You don't have to just study for the IC. We also have a blended course um, that we're offering at Queller that we're going to send you information on. I want to emphasize this is a good summer between seventh and eighth grade to gear up 
for private schools, public schools, charter schools, screen schools, specialized. Don't limit your options to just one school. So please make sure that you're applying to more than one type of school. Many students report that the IC is easier as an exam than the SHSAT. So keep that in mind as well. It's not going to hurt for you to take it. So I will go also ahead. agree with saying that because as a person who's taken the exam, it was easier for me to take the ISCE than the SHSAT, just so you know. And Kai, do you mind really quickly, just some, a lot of students happen to know your background, but if you could give us like the gist of it, and it would be really cool to know where you are right now. That'll be great. Absolutely. So right now, my father is actually from the Caribbean island of Anguilla. So I'm here right now escaping. We we're trying to keep safe and, you know, and this is the best place for us to be at the time being. Um, in terms of my background, um, I have been attending the Dwight School, which is an international um, independent or private school in the city. Um, and I began there in fifth grade. Um, and now I'm graduating. Actually, tomorrow is my graduation. And wow. I will be attending UPenn or the University of Pennsylvania in the fall. So that's so great. Bravo. Bravo. And as some of you may have already heard from Kai, she was accepted to 15 schools, 16 schools. Around that. Yeah. <laughs> So we're really proud and we're really honored. And um, I, I am blessed. I'm very fortunate that I got to meet Kai through our SAT course. And I'm honored that you traveled to Queens for the prep and then you went to Manhattan. And I, I really just want to say I'm so happy that we became friends through this test because that's, you know, what we are. And thank you for hosting this many, many miles away. All right. So let's me. go from here. All right. So in terms of reading, I'll give you a little tip that I always start off with. In terms of beginning the passage, it's key to know how many passages you have. So you have five short reading passages and you have 30 minutes. So that Can you means, zoom it out? Let's zoom it out a little so we see it more. Uh, it's a Go ahead. Okay. okay. So yeah, you have five passages and you have 30 minutes. What that means is you have roughly six minutes per passage. Um, and additionally, you have six questions. So really you have Give yourself about like a minute or two to read and then give yourself four minutes to answer those questions. Okay. Um, and what I will do, sorry, let me erase this. I always, whenever I'm doing a reading passage, I always, always, always just begin with highlighting or underlining. You won't have a highlighter on the exam. But what I've done is every line I read, I highlight because it just keeps it in your memory. It shows that you're actively reading. So when I was younger, we can all take like a, a minute to read the passage and we'll come Cut, back. Can you, make, can you make it a little larger for the students to see also? If you just plus it out. Yeah, let's make it maybe larger. This is as large as it's gonna go before it's sort of off the page. Okay, and the students should also have a copy of this. We should have, it should have be in your inbox. If you don't have it, let me know and I'll send it to you. I can send it to the group as a Google Doc as well. All right, so let's take a minute or two to read and then we'll come back and we'll go over the questions, okay guys? So that you or guys maybe, can actually- Yeah, or maybe we, uh, let's, let's just see. Uh, anybody wanna read? Anyone from the group? Anybody, readers, readers? Wait, do they, so, some kids don't have it. It might be a good idea actually if you read it for now and I'm gonna also make sure that everyone has the sample test as well. Okay, Absolutely. go ahead. So when I was younger, I was extremely interested in freshwater biology and spent most of my time dredging about in ponds and streams, catching minute, minute creatures and keeping them in large jars. Among other things, I had one jar full of caddis larvae, which camouflaged themselves by decorating their cocoons. The caddis I had collected looked rather dull, for I had collected them from a from a, a stagnant pool, excuse me. They had merely decorated the outside of their cocoons with little bits of dead water plants. I had been told by my friend, however, that if you remove a caddis larva from its cocoon and place it in a jar of clean water, it would spin itself a new cocoon and decorate the outside of whichever materials you supplied. Deciding to experiment, I removed four of my caddis larvae from their cocoons. Then I placed them in a jar of clean water and lined, to the, and, and, and lined the bottom up with tiny seashells. Later, to my astonishment, 
the larvae had intricately decorated the new cocoons with seashells. I discovered that by moving the larvae to a different jar, uh, a different, sorry, wait, a different jar with a new substance, they would produce new multicolored cocoons. My greatest triumph, triumph lay in forcing them to decorate their cocoons with fragments of blue glass, then red brick and white seashells. Moreover, the brick, the materials were put on in stripes. I never remember feeling quite the same sort of satisfaction as I did when I showed off my red, white, and blue caddis larvae to my friends. I think the poor creatures were really rather relieved when they hatched and flew away and could forget about the problems of cocoon building. All righty. Now on to the questions. So I always, as a tip, I always like to get the quickest questions done first. So the first question for me that I, that, I, that I want to get done first is the one that question number two. In line four, minute, near, most nearly means, and let's look at it in context. Um, in line four. So, catching minute creatures and keeping them in large jars. That's sort of like the, the sentence that it's, that it's embedded in. So, keeping timely creatures, they're not really focused on the time here. I think the fact that you're able to keep the creatures in a jar suggests or mentions or really focuses in on their size. So for me, that made me think of tiny. And um, that is in fact the answer. So C is the answer because minute best means tiny. All right, so back to the Nile. Once I finished the, the main easy, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. The main easy questions. Wait, we have another one. Question number four. In line eight, the author describes the caddis larvae as rather dull because, um, and we go to line eight and we look and see what they're saying. They looked rather dull for I had collected them from a stagnant pool. So, four is C because they were living in a stagnant pool. So always go back and reference the sentence in which the phrase is being found because that will most likely be the answer. And it is in fact the answer. So the primary purpose of this passage, is it really just thoroughly discussing their interest in biology? That's of course the intro, but the rest of the passage doesn't really talk specifically about their interest in biology. So that's not the right answer. Comparing the caddis larvae to other cocoon building insects, well, we don't really learn or mention any other insects or cocoon insects in this passage, so that can't be the answer. And providing information about the life cycle, again, not found in the passage. So the answer most definitely is B. Um, and everyone, you guys, you guys can follow along because we just sent the link right now. I'm also gonna email it. So we'll have the link and an email, um, and thanks for pointing that out, okay? So keep that in mind. You'll have it as well. Go ahead. And Kai, if you're able to take any notes, are you able to write on this? Absolutely. Let's do that. So do you mind writing and annotating? We'll save this for the kids. They'll be able, is it possible for you to save the file at the end so they'll have this? Sure. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let's, let's do that. All right, go ahead. Okay, so let me just go back and put in the answers that we had. We'll have a nice colorful annotation. My let's go. Is tiny. Number three, the author caused the larvae to decorate their cocoons with stripes by, and again, you have to just go straight back into the passage on where they were talking about decorating them. So he said that he, they produced new multicolored cocoons and he forced them to do so. And it says so actually right here. Oops. With, he forced them to decorate their cocoons with fragments of blue grass and red brick and white seashells. So that's the answer right there, right in the passage. There's not much extra super hard thinking you need to do. You go and reference the passage for all these answers. If it's not in the passage, it's most likely not the answer. So, so uh, remember guys, if you, so maybe we'll even write that down. If you can't prove it, don't choose it. Don't choose the answer, okay? Make sure that you can go back and choose. And Kai, whenever possible, just try to make the font larger so some kids can follow along on the screen. Absolutely. I'm yeah. working on the email uh, with my other hand, okay? 
I need a third one at the moment, but we'll make do with the two I have. All right. Perfect. So for three, it must be It is C. So what I also, something, if you can zoom it out for a little bit, is good? Go ahead. So what I'm, they are produced, yeah. So he forced them to decorate by adding, he, so it cannot be, he did not change the water in the jar, so it cannot be D. So we're gonna cross out D. Um, he didn't really add any new material to the jar during the cocoon building process. What he did was he changed their environment. He took them out. If you go back to the text, it says that he took them out during different stages. Again, just referencing the text is how you find your answer. Um, okay, the kids are asking you if you could just make it a little thicker when you're writing, when you're circling, thicker. so we'll see it better. This is as thick as it goes on my iPad. Um, and larger. I can enlarge it. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, this way we can see each individual question. Okay, better. And guys, you can totally type into the chat. Don't be shy about writing, you know, whatever you want, just as long as we stay on topic. Awesome. So in line eight, the author, we actually already did this one and we said that it was C. So again, we do the easier questions first because they take the least amount of time. You get those done quick and done fast. In lines 33 through 36. So for these types of questions, you're not just going to look strictly at those lines. Oops. You're not just going to look strictly at those lines. Um, if if it's not if it's a if it's like a if it's a comma or it's interrupting a sentence, but since we have a, luckily a complete sentence um, from 33 to 36, I think we're going to underline that passage. I think the poor creatures were really rather relieved when they hatched and flew away and could forget about the problems of cocoon building. Right? Okay, so that's the last sentence. They were rather relieved. You take note really of the vocabulary that the author chooses to use too, especially maybe I would almost double underline that. Okay, so relief does not mean that they were energized. So we can we can cross that one out. Yeah, cross that one out. Relief does not mean that they were annoyed. Wait. I mean, sorry. Well, they were relieved that it was over. When someone is relieved that something is over, that might suggest annoyance. So we will put a tack right next to that one because it may be the answer. Were they pleased by the attention they were receiving? Well, no, if they were eager to leave. And were they perplexed by the author's interest in them? Well, they're not human, so they can't really, bugs can't feel perplexed. So that can't be the answer either. So the answer must be B, by process of elimination. The last question. What, what most probably led the author to experiment with caddis larvae? A passage in a book about pond life. Well, there was no passage mentioned in the text. A conversation with the author's friend. Now, if you're not sure, go back and check the text. You'll see. A conversation with the author's friend. Oops. Ah, oh, here, line 12. I had been told by my friend, however, that if you remove, so he's sort of, he's talking to his friend about this, which actually suggests that it most likely is the answer. But just to be sure, there was no to talk about meeting a famous naturalist, so that can't be the answer. And the author doesn't really mention a pastime of collecting creatures from ponds and straight streams. He's mainly focused on caddis larvae. Um, and that 
love really came out. He didn't do this beforehand. So B is the best answer. Okay. Let's take and a And before look. we go to the, I just want, before we go to the next passage, I want to recap this passage. Okay. So let, how many questions are connected to this passage? We have six questions. So everyone, let's zoom. Let's look at question. Can, can we go back? What, just for a moment, just for a moment, just to the passage. The passage? Yeah. Absolutely. And let's zoom it out really fast. I'm going to pick on, I don't know who to pick on, uh, Alexa. Hello, Alexa. Okay. Alexa, can you read the first paragraph to me really fast? Go. When I was younger, I was extremely interested in freshwater biology and spent most of my time dredging about in ponds and streams, catching minute creatures and keeping them in large jars. Among other things, I had one jar full of caddis larvae, which camouflage themselves by decorating their cocoons. The caddis I had collected looked rather dull, for I had collected them from a stagnant pool. They had merely decorated the outside of their cocoons with little bits of dead water plants. Got it. Alexa, is this first person, second person, 28th person? What are we reading here? First person. Good. This is a personal narrative, a personal experience. How do you know that it's first person? What's the letter? Thank you, Maya. What's the letter that you know that you see 50 times here that it's first person? Letter, letter, the letter, Jerry, what's the letter? I, good. Now, Kai, can you just go to the next to the questions, please, really fast? I want to go over this with the kids as well. Absolutely. Let's go open, make you make it larger for me. Actually, someone just asked, why is number one, why is it not A? Um, I will say this, number one cannot be A because that was not that was only mentioned in one sentence in the entire passage. That talk of biology was not mentioned throughout the passage. So that means that if it's not mentioned throughout the passage, then it can't be the main purpose of the passage. And a quick way of finding the purpose of a passage is to read the last few sentences. There is no talk of their love of biology in this last sentence. So that's a clear indicator that it can't be the main purpose. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I want to just rephrase what you're saying. So let's do it again. Okay, ready? Let's go. Can you make it larger for me? Larger, larger, larger. Okay, ready? Everyone sees it, right? Say yes. Everybody type yes, type yes. You see? Yes. Okay, and then Kai, I want you to help me write for this. Okay, ready? You see where it says the primary purpose of the passage? The passage. It does not say, everybody better be paying attention to this, okay? It does not say the primary purpose of paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three. Does anyone see where it says the primary purpose of paragraph one is? Paragraph two, paragraph three. No, thank you, Daniel. No, somebody write no a hundred times. No. This is asking you for the purpose of every single paragraph in the passage. As, thank you, Maya. Exactly. That's my point. You don't want to pick an answer choice that only gives you a paragraph, okay? So the primary purpose, so in front of the word primary, Kai, can you write the word 100%? The 100% primary purpose of the passage is to, thank you, Jerry, good, London, A+, plus. okay? You have to do it. And then you have to make sure, now let's look at number two, ready? In line four, minute, you see where it says most nearly means? They're trying to trap you. You don't need it to be most nearly means. Put down, cross it out, stab it, kill it, bye. Peace out, bye, 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 bye. Crush it like a bug, Kai. Get rid of most nearly means. Okay, you see where it says most nearly means? Cross it out and put 100% says. You see what it says? Say 100% says. Cross it out. I don't even want to, Kai, I don't even want to see the words most nearly means. It's, I, they're ugly. Those are ugly words. I have anger towards those words. Those are misleading words. We don't need them. Okay? Good. Minute. Put 100% means. 100% says. Okay, fine. I probably should have gotten rid of the word means. 100% means. 
See that? Yeah, they should be. Thank you, Christian. They should be ashamed of themselves. You know why? They're trying to mislead you. Who do they think they are? Okay. So make sure and remember, can you, is, are you able to even write this out? If you can't like prove it, don't choose it. Don't choose it. Get rid of it. Okay. We're trying here. Okay. If you can't prove it, don't choose it. Ooh, we're trying. Don't. Don't choose it. Kai actually has much better handwriting than this. Okay. Don't choose yeah, it. Yeah, I do not write like a okay. two-year-old. The iPad makes it okay. hard. Don't choose <laughs> it. Okay. So now let's look at number three. Yes. Yeah, slice the head off. Exactly. Why, why are they giving you stuff most nearly means? You know out of these four options, one is right. Let's look at the next one. The author caused the larva to decorate their cocoons with stripes by. Did the author, you see between the word author and caused? Guess what I want you guys to put between the word author and caused? 20 100%. Caused, 10, yes. I love it. 10% caused, 20% caused, 99% caused. 100%. You have to choose a definitive answer. The author 100% caused. The author absolutely caused. Do you see that? Don't pick an answer that's maybe. Because you know it's like a trick, right? They're trying to trick you. They're like, oh, what do you think is right? A, B, C, or D. You know three of them are wrong. You know that. Let's go to four quickly. Four. Okay, ready? In line eight, the author describes the caddis larva as rather dull. Does he describe the larva? He describes, guess what word you think you should put? What phrase do you think you should put between author uh, and percent. describes? Very good. Everyone, let's say it. 100% describes. Good. Okay, next one. Five. The final sentence, line 33 to 36, and Kai, remind us, what do we do? Do we only read 33 to 36? No, you have to look a little bit before and a little bit after to make sure you're not missing anything. Very good. You see where it says the author suggests, suggests, we're going to cross it out. Bye. Stab it. Bye, 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 bye. Gone. No more. This is a misleading word. He's not suggesting. He's saying. See that? Does everyone get that? Bye. Bye, bye, suggests. Okay. Peace out. Okay, guess what we're going to do for six. Ready? What most probably led? I would get rid of most probably entirely. I would say what 100% led. Led. Based on what you've read. Thank you, Kai. More black. Bye. We don't need it. Bye-bye. Okay? Do you guys see that? You want to choose definitive answers because these are multiple choice. It, listen up, everybody. I hope you guys are paying attention. You don't want to say like A is 20% right. Let me pick it. You know that you have to choose an answer from these four that's 100% correct based on what you've read. So why would you choose something that's a little bit right? Choose the one that is directly leading you to the golden answer. Okay. And if you can't find it in the passage, if you don't see those words in the passage, then it is not the answer. If they don't maybe, prove it, if, choose if it, you can't prove it. it, don't choose it. So if you have to kind of assume if, if, if the, no, if the answer, if the, if the question is making you assume something about the text, it's not right. It has to be said in the text in order to be a hundred percent correct. So thank you, Adna. That's exactly what I want to see. Make sure that you're choosing the right answer because the whole exam, they're designing it to trick you. What do you think is right? What do you, what might be right? What could be true? What's probably true? It, this is not like, a, don't look at, don't be like a sky tester. You don't look at the sky. You look at the passage. The passage has the answers. All right. Let's keep going. Go ahead, guys. Okay, everyone, I'm sending the link over. Um, in a little bit, but you should have it. Go ahead. Should we do the next English passage? Yeah, go right ahead. And I'm going to send the, um, I'm going to send the link again. Everyone should have it, but I'm sending it out again. Let's go to the next one. Go ahead. Awesome. Does someone want to read this one? Oh, let's pick, let's see. Can I pick somebody? Go do, ahead. Do, 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 do. Anish. God, people who are A's. <laughs> Sorry guys. Anish. Anish. 
Read for me. Make me proud. The Go whole ahead. thing? Just the first paragraph. Okay. Totem pole. <laughs> totem pole is the tallest wood carvings in the world. A trademark of the Northwest Coast Indians. There are seven nation Indian nations up and down the Northwest Coast, including Alaska. They each have their own style of carving. Each pole is different, and each pole tells its own story. Very good. Okay, so Kai, if we can, can we just, Anish, can you give us like a quick summary? What is this passage about? Go ahead. And then Kai, take it from here. I'm going to use my other hand to send that email over with the passage. Go ahead. What are we looking at? What is a quick summary? What is this first paragraph talking about? Anish? Uh, this was talking about, um, this was giving an idea what the passage was about and the nation's tribes and they make polls. Yes. So we have a cute little summary. And then Kai, I'll let you take it from here, but enjoy. So people who are A, you are safe. We're going to move on to different letters. Okay, All go right. ahead. So as we read this, I just, what I typically do, I highlight the, the most, or underline the most important parts. Um, and so the seven Indian, there are seven Indian nations, which are, is important to note. Um, and noting that they have their different type of carving and then also noting that what totem poles are and how they're important is important to note as well. So next, an elder taught the carver about ancestors, crests, and symbols of the family before the carver began to work. Design was left to the carver. That's important. After splitting away the wood to give, to form, to give form to the figures, the carver finished the final details and shaping with curved knives. The farmer, carver was also responsible for painting the pole, although not all poles were painted. The parts painted and the choice of colors depended on the tradition of the area. In the 1800s, the tallest poles were about 60 feet high, and sometimes hundreds of people hauled on ropes to raise a pole to an upright position. The art of the totem pole carving almost died out, with totem poles being felled, sold, or even cut up for firewood. In the 1950s, oops, 1950s, the few remaining carvers were hired by the University of British Columbia Museum of Anthropology to re reproduce old and decaying quackle, quackle, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it correctly, but you get the idea, poles. But you know what, you, don't, you guys don't even have to pronounce it correctly, just skip no. ahead, okay? Go ahead. This project was largely responsible for bringing the Northwest Coast Indians, Indian art back from the brink of extinction. Okay, so this, I already heavily I underlined a lot of stuff, but that's okay. It's, a, it's good to underline as much as you, as you think is important because it keeps it in your memory for later when you have to go and answer the questions so you're not doing too much back and forth flipping, okay? So that's perfectly okay to do. Um, next, we will look at the questions. So, does anyone remember what the first tip is when you're answering the questions? What questions do you go for first? Can someone tell me? Easy. Oh, Amit's raising his hand. You guys are awesome. I love how we're interacting. Go ahead, Amit. What's the first one? And Daniel, he typed it in, and Michael typed it in, and Haley typed it in. You guys got it. Perfect. Exactly. The easiest and the fastest. There we go. So that's what we go for first, and that's what we're going to look for now. So, best expressions my idea? No, we're not going to do that one first. Any vocabulary ones? Mm. Hmm. Let's, okay, so if you don't see any quick, quick, quick ones, we're just going to go start from one, one to one to 12. Okay. I mean, sorry, six to seven to 12. If you can't find the first, if you can't find any quick ones, it's going to start from the beginning. So which best expresses cross out that best. You already know we don't make assumptions. We don't look for ambiguous, ambiguous things. We want to know what expresses it. Just what expresses it, 100% expresses the main idea of the passage. Okay. Um, are we, the main idea is that totem poles are making a comeback? Well, no, we might've mentioned it, but that wasn't the sole purpose of the entire um, passage. 
Totem poles are no longer an artistic achievement. Not only is that rude, but it is not true either. And it doesn't, it's not mentioned anywhere in the passage. So it's a no-go. The art of totem pole carving almost died out. Again, while this, now here's the thing. Sometimes they'll mention it in the passage, but it's not right because guess what? The main idea is something that is mentioned throughout the passage. They don't talk about totem pole carving dying out throughout the entire passage. Therefore, it's not the answer. Now, Northwest Coast Indians are famous for large, beautiful totem poles. Now that, in fact, is something that is found throughout the passage, and that is the answer. Number D, I mean, letter D. Oh, and then everyone, I, I wanna I wanna go through something very important, okay? It says here which best expresses the main idea of the passage. Is it are we only talking about the main idea of paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph one and two? Are we talking about the whole one hundred percent passage? So can we write before the word passage, can we write the word a hundred percent? which 100% expresses the main idea of 100% the passage. Do you understand how we need, thank you, London. I, I, you gotta show me how you're doing that, okay? <laughs> That's cool, okay? Yep, all right. Remember, Let's go to the eight. whole passage and we want 100% express it. And by the way, we just emailed the kids the Zoom link, so you have the email as well. Awesome. London, you got to show me your secrets. I want to see, I want to know how to do that. Go ahead. <laughs> so the author implies that totem pole carving was, quote, abandoned for a long period. That was something that was mentioned in the passage. So we don't know yet. We just mark it as could be true. So whenever you think something may be right, you don't know yet, you haven't seen the other options, you kind of put a little tick mark next to it like this. You see, like that. Um, it was not a good way of, for a carver to make a living? Well, they talked in no way about the, how carvers made a living, so that can't be right, and it's not right. They, it is not a respected occupation. They didn't mention it at all. So if they didn't mention it in the text, it's definitely not true. They stopped because they're very, no, I'm not even gonna read that, because guess what? They don't mention it in the passage. Who's confused? Christian, are you confused? Why, what are you confused about? Anyone, everyone else good? Can you guys put a thumbs up if you're good? Okay, good, cool, everyone's good. All right, the last one. Again, not mentioned in the passage, so it can't be the answer. So, so the answer here, everyone's following, the answer is, Kai, let's summarize again, one more time. Absolutely. So, whenever we're looking at questions, before, if you find an answer that seems like it could be right, but you're not 100% sure yet, you put a little dash next to it. Uh, yes, Daniel, you're right. Takeaway implies, absolutely. <laughs> um, you wanna I put just a little want to tell children that we love them. They bring me joy. Don't they bring you joy? We bring them they joy. They sure do. They bring you joy. So, so you're going to put a okay. hash mark next to the question or next to the, next to the answer that you think could be right. From there, you're gonna look at the other options and you can either cross them or tick them. Cross them out if you think they're wrong, tick them if they could be right. And if you have two or more options that are ticked as they could be right, you're gonna go back in the text and see which one is found in the text and which one is not. And really is there. You really have to 100% see it in the text. And that's how let's you write, it. let's write it also. The author, let's cross, write, 100% says that totem pole carving was. I guess grammatically you should say 100% said, right? The, uh, I don't care, as long as you say 100%, as long as you get a definitive answer, that's all that matters. All right. All right. So that's how we got that the answer was in fact A. Oh, why is it not, are you guys not seeing my screen anymore? Let me get it back up. 
I might have touched something. Sorry, guys. Did I do that? Probably. Sorry. Okay, so we're putting back up the screen. Yes, broadcast on Zoom. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yes, three, two, one, go. Okay, cool. We're back. Can you guys see it? Oh my goodness, more people are calling me. Start broadcast. Three, two, one, go. Okay, Finally. so we are back. I'm sharing and my screen. Better than ever before. Good. All right, guys. So, um, here we are. One sec, give me one second. Good. You guys are gonna notice, do you, do you have, you guys who have taken SHSCT prep, do you notice this is a little bit easier, harder? Do you think the passages are a little shorter, longer? What do you, what are you noticing with IC versus S, yeah, the, uh, yes, thank you. The SHSCT yeah. seems like a much harder exam. So keep that in mind. The IC passages are much shorter. Yes, Nora, it is more And a lot more straightforward. Yeah. Absolutely. Very direct answers. Okay. All righty. So what best describes the organization of lines 8 through 17? Now, again, when you see and when they give you specific lines, what do we do? Do we look at just those lines, or, or do we look at uh, before and four. after? Plus four minus four. <laughs> yes, beyond. And the whole paragraph, not the whole paragraph, Christian, but we look, we look above, we look a little bit before, we look a little bit after. But if it happens to be a paragraph, then you just look at the whole paragraph. So we have eight through 17, which, oops. Eight through 17 is in the middle of a paragraph. So we wanna look a little bit before, a little bit afterwards, since eight is the start of the paragraph. So just like go Can over make, to- wait, Just make it larger. Can you make it larger for the, group, for the kids? They'll follow along easier. Go ahead. Absolutely. So we're just looking at the organization and we're looking through, we're talking about ancestors and how and how and what the carver does and how they work and how they build the poles. Okay, so that's really what they're talking about from eight through 17. We just want to get like a main idea of what they're talking about. Oops, whoa, what happened? One second, technical difficulties. And we're back, okay, cool. Eight through 17. The organization of eight through 17. So, different designs for totem poles are contrasted. Um, no. They only talk about how he makes totem poles. They don't talk about, they don't really contrast too many different types of totem poles being made. Okay, so we're gonna cross that one out because it's not in the text. And again, we're gonna cross out that best because we wanna know what 100% describes the organization of the paragraph. A process is described in chronological order. Now, that actually is what's doing. That's, that's, that's what's being done. They're describing how a totem pole is being made. So I'm gonna, I put a tick mark next to it. An opinion is presented and then supported with facts. There's no opinion being presented, so we're gonna cross it out. The history of totem poles is being traced. No, not in the text. So the answer is B. Now, number 10. According to the passage, which is true of totem poles? That they are non-existent today? No, they actually spoke about a university bringing them back into the culture, so that can't be right. That they were once created only by this tribe? No, they don't, only, they don't mention whether it was solely done by one specific tribe. So we're gonna cross that one out. Every time you see the word only in a passage that, that, is, that limits, the possibility of other things, it usually is a signal that that's, it's too strong of an answer. So usually when things say only, or very strong statements like that, they're usually not correct. And it just so happens that this one isn't either, this, this one isn't too. 
they varied predictably, pre sorry, predictably from carver to carver. Well, no, we don't really talk about how they vary from other carvers in the text. So that leaves D to be the answer. And D is the answer. The author of the passage appears to care most deeply about the fact that, oops, um, okay. Each poll tells a different story. Not really. They don't really talk too much about how each poll tells a different story. That's not really what's what he mentions a lot in the text. So no. Some polls took over a year to make. That was mentioned. That's not even a, that wasn't even a full sentence in the text. So that means that it couldn't be important. Or that, that means that he couldn't care deeply about it if he barely mentions it. So that's also wrong too. Carver's painted some polls and not others. Again, he barely mentions this, like a half a line. You can't care about something that you barely mention. So, can't be C. But the artistic heritage of the Northwest Coast Indians was saved. Now that is something that he notes in his final paragraph or his conclusion. Um, so it means that that is in fact important and shows that he cares deeply about it. And appears, yes, as you guys mentioned in the chat, appears is not something we think is important and we cross it out. For the last question, according to the passage, a museum helped preserve the art of totem pole carving by, okay, preserving totem poles so that they would not decay. Well, that's not really something that we, that's not what, that's not why that's not an issue of preservation. This isn't like the totem poles, decaying was not an issue that was mentioned in the text. So therefore, it's not the answer. Commissioning carvers to duplicate existing totem poles. Now, I, since I'm not a little bit sure, I'm not sure, I don't remember exactly what was said. I'm gonna go back. Oops. Okay. Ah. And in fact, a few remaining carvers were hired by the university. Well, I'm going to highlight this part for you guys. They were hired by the university to reproduce old, oh my gosh, it's huge. <laughs> they were hired by the university to reproduce old decaying, oops, yeah, reproduce old and decaying poles. Okay. So that really, so that kind of shows what we're trying to get at. And it was found directly in the text. So that could definitely be the main answer. And I think it is the main answer. But we always take a look at the other options. Selling the museum's collection of Indian art to the public, not mentioned. Encouraging carvers to create new and innovative designs, not mentioned. It has to be B, absolutely. So guys, let's do a summary, okay? Because remember, we're hitting eight o'clock and we need to leave some time for the math also, okay? Good. So let's look quickly. Can we start at the top of the page? And let's just make sure that we're reading the questions correctly. And I'm actually gonna do this with my doggy. We're gonna do this together, Goldie. We're having a moment, ready? Hello, everyone, we love you. Goldie, you're gonna teach us. Do you remember this dog, hi? I do. do <laughs> hi, <laughs> Goldie. Okay, ready? Let's see, okay. You see where it says, which expresses the main idea of the passage? So we had 100%, this one's already done. Let's go to the next one. Ready, go. The author 100% says that totem pole carving was. That's good, we did that. Next one, okay, next one. Which describes the organization, which 100%, thank you, London. I'm really enjoying these decorations. Okay, next. Everyone, remember, this is much more straightforward than the SHSAT. According to the passage, which is, ready? Partially true, 25% true, 80% true. The correct answer, has to be 100% true. Got it? See that? I wrote a big one just for that. Yay. Okay. Right, Goldie? <laughs> we have, I have an assistant here. Okay. 
Ready? The author of the passage, not a little bit cares most deeply about the fact that not 20%, not 99.99999%, he 100% to care most deeply about the passage, the fact that, you see that? It has to be right, ready? 12, according to the passage, a museum helped preserve, did it help 10%? Did it help 20%? Or did it help 99.999999? Or it, the answer is none of the above. It's 100%. Ready? Thank you, Manny. Okay. Everyone, you understand? It's so important that you pick. And by the way, this, this, this rule does not only apply to IC. It applies to SHSAT, SAT, PSAT. You want to make sure that when you're dealing, yes, oh my goodness, ACT, so many LSAT, MCAT. Every GRE, test for the rest of your life. Every test. Yes, but thank you for the rest of your, uh, your testing life. So your testing life is eventually going to end. So, and you, and you get to move on. <laughs> but remember, this is a big deal. So I want to say that we're doing very, very well with this. Um, can we skim through the rest of the reading? And then let's go into math because we have an hour left and we want to use our time wisely. Didn't that hour go by so quickly, guys? Come on. It went by fast. All right. This is another passage. You'll notice it's a little bit longer than the last few. Yeah. Um, news media. And mm -hmm. again, we have six questions. You, you want me to go back through it? Read yeah, you, you guys can type if you want, okay? And then this is another one. And notice everything, it, it has lines and they're numbered. They're numbered, okay? Oh, uh -huh, thanks. Let's keep going. Next one. Absolutely. Someone actually wants to ask a question. Should you we guys have can them ask, type it? You yeah, can type it ask, into the chat. Ask, or type it. You can, Jonas. you can type it into the chat, okay? As long as it's on topic. If not, it was nice knowing you. Okay, next one. <laughs> What and then the last passage. I mean, I almost want to put like a heart. Can we put like a heart here? Look, guys, isn't this nice? It's a short, clean passage, okay? It's a short, clean passage. It's very important. The SHSAT passages, how much longer do you think the SHSAT passages are? Nearly like twice as long. Yeah, at least, okay? So this is a great opportunity. So let's keep going to the next one. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, and that's the six questions, and we are at math. Yes, and now we're going into the math. So everyone, let's take kind of a minute. Is it okay? Let's take, how about like two or three minutes? Kai, why don't, Kai went to the Dwight School. Can you tell us about the school in Manhattan? Where else did you get in? Why did you choose the school? Let's take a minute just to regroup, okay, before we get into math. Tell us a little bit about the private school you went, okay? So I went to the Dwight School, which is um, located on the Upper West Side of New York. And actually, prior to that, I went to another private school in New Jersey. Um, and my parents, they just liked the school because they thought, saw that it had the IB, which is a rigorous program. It's one of the best diplomas. It's actually the best diploma you can have as a high school graduate. Um, and it's really prestigious and it, it, you learn a lot and it definitely prepares you for college. Um, so that is why my parents decided for me to go to the school. Prior to going, applying to Dwight, I had to take the ISCE. Um, Jonas, um, you will have to see which school, the school will tell you which exam to take. So it really varies in the school. They have different exams for different schools too. Um, but anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, While you're speaking, can you make that screen a little larger? Cause I, I kind of want to rub it in. I want to make sure the kids understand that this test is easier than the SHSAT. I'm not saying you shouldn't take both. I just think it's an incredible shame if you just take one. All right, so go ahead, as you were saying about, guys, do you wanna ask her anything about the Dwight School? Anything, go ahead. Yeah, please feel free to ask me about my experience and we can, so I think it's a great opportunity to take the ISE exam. Um, so I would definitely go for it. The ISE is a little expensive. Um, it's uh, ready for, I think, I, I wanna say it's around what, $200, but they have waivers yeah. if you can't afford it. So if you can't afford the exam, they will always waive it, waive the fee, so. What yeah. is the benefit? It's, it's, what are the benefits? The benefits is that you can get into a private school if you take the ISCE exam. That's the benefit. And private <laughs> schools are a really good option. You know, there's private, there's public. Oh, he's at, 
Ishan's asking, did you get into any other private schools? Um, the Dwight school was the main one that my family applied to for, because I actually, I took the lower level exam for the IC. Um, <laughs> And I, we applied for um, lower schools and we, we applied for other, high, I don't, I actually can't recall which high schools we applied for, but I did get, we chose to stay with Dwight. Yeah, with and then Amit has a question. You guys can type it into the chat, okay? Dwight is actually a little different than other New York City private schools because it's an international school. So Dwight has campuses in Shanghai, China. We have campuses in Seoul, Korea campuses in Los Angeles, an online campus, so you can go to online school, which I guess is now pretty fitting since now we are really adequately prepared to teach over Zoom. Um, we, it's also different because it is not like a typical American school system. It's an international school system. So we have, we'll, we'll go over the question in a little bit, you guys. Um, but yeah, so I think it is a little bit different from other schools and it, it provides you with an international education that can prepare you for, you know, colleges, not only in the U S but also colleges in um, internationally. If you want to go to Oxford, if you want to go to Cambridge, if you want to go to school in Africa, if you want to go to school in anywhere, it prepares you for that. Is it, is it, is it more like a STEM or art school? Dwight is what you want it to be. You can make your high school experience more STEM related or more arts related. Um, I, Personally, am I do a little bit of both. So I actually sing professionally um, in, a, in a choir. So I also, I don't really focus my time with art in school. I actually wanted to be, I want to be a doctor. I'm really interested in medicine. So I took a lot of science and, and, and math courses to supplement that. Um, but if you can really take any route that you want to at Dwight, which is really awesome. They have a lot of different opportunities for students, not only in the STEM field, but also, um, you know, in, in, in um, arts and humanities too, too. Can you go to Dwight with a scholarship? Yes, you can. There are a lot of scholarships if you score well. I mean, if you do well at the Dwight, the tuition is high, right? So private it's school high. in general is very high. But kids who score 99th percentile in the I see kids who score well, their programs that like prep for prep is one of the, I mean, if you score in the top percentile, on these entrance exams, there's a ton of opportunity. And Kai, if you can elaborate, I mean, not, no, not everyone's paying full price for private school. Not at all. Even students who are financially able to pay don't always pay full price. Most people don't, in fact, pay full price. So um, if you are an academically achieving, high achieving student, and you can show that through your testing, they will definitely, 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 um, you know, prepare, give you um, money for that. Would you do it over specialized high schools? I actually did choose Dwight over specialized high schools. I applied, I took the SHSET and I ended up choosing Dwight over those because of the IB program, which is more rigorous um, than the program at a lot of the other um, STEM schools um, in the city. And also I think just the resources um, and you get more personalized attention because the classes are smaller. So my graduating class, has only 72 kids. So it's a lot smaller than other schools who have like 600 kids or um, so. That's why I, I think Dwight is the best. And why would I choose Dwight over other privates? I think again, because Dwight is an IB school and not a lot of the other private schools are IB schools and IB is more rigorous and um, it's better for college and it better prepares you for college, not only in the US, but also internationally. Whew, okay. <laughs> How many ended up going to top schools? Um, I, it's one, I'm one, another kid. I think, I mean, honestly, I would say about 10. Really what the issue, the thing is, is that, yeah, it's for Ivy League students in terms of, okay. I got into Ivy, there's like, about four kids that got into Ivy Leagues, but a lot of them got into the same schools. The issue is that with a lot of private schools is that they will take a lot one year and then a few in another year. Um, 10 out of how many? Out of 72. But don't, what, okay. I'm getting flooded. What is the difference between the ISE and the SSAT? ISE is for private schools and the SSAT is largely taken for boarding schools, which are also private, but. 
Yeah. And we'll talk about how it's graded afterward. But I think maybe could we get started with the math? Is that, does that sound good to you, Francis? Let's do like another three minutes of questions. So let's go really, really fast. Go. Hike, Absolutely. Go, go. When you take the ISCE in eighth grade, okay, so again, there's three testing sessions that you can take the exam. Whoa, okay, there's three testing sessions. You can take it in the fall, the winter, or the spring. Um, I always think it's best to start really early and take it in the fall, and then you can, you know, take it again if you need to. Well, it's better, actually, if you study over the summer, you have September to December as a testing window, so you can exactly. take the test then. Um, go ahead. What, do you have to be at the top of your class to go to an Ivy League school? Um, at Dwight specifically, the issue with valedictorian is that we don't weight GPA. So kids who take really easy classes can, can be valedictorian compared to kids who take the hardest classes. So um, I'm not the valedictorian of my class. However, I am going to an Ivy League school. Um, I think it's really about, Tell them what and yes, I, did, I got into put, Columbia University, Cornell, Johns Hopkins, um, UPenn, which is where I'm going now, those are four Ivies, um, and Johns Hopkins is also a good school. Emory, um, so yeah, I, I got into some great, great, great schools. I think also, in terms of my grades, I scored really, I had high grades, I was an A student, um, and, but I think also what kind of set me apart was my experiences. So regardless of where you go, what you do with yourself during wherever you are is the most important thing, and that's what really sets you apart. Um, what is the SHSAT? The SHSAT is an exam for private, for specialized high schools. Um, so like Stuyvesant, Bronx Science. I'm sorry, one second. Okay, and can you take a test in fourth grade? Um, you sure can, you will take the lower level exam to get into um, schools starting in fifth grade. Um, and the other exam that you were mentioning is for, someone was mentioning the FHS. One second, let me scroll up a little bit. So there are a lot of um, religious schools, Catholic schools in the city. And I believe it's like the S, the H, oops, one second. Yeah, it's a, there's, a, there's another exam that you would take for um, um, Catholic schools. Um, what did set me apart? What set me apart as a student, um, I took a lot of, so I, I made sure that I took the hardest STEM classes I could in my school. Um, I sing professionally, so I have been doing that for years since I was in like, in like a kid, since I was young, since like sixth grade. I take Mandarin, Mandarin Chinese, um, so I speak that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I do also do a lot of programs. I spoke, I mean, I, I work here. I, I, I speak to a lot of other people, a lot of younger kids. Um, so yeah, clear, like what kind of incredible work ethic you have, the fact that you're a student graduating, you applied to just the fact that you even applied, you applied to what, 20 schools, right? So yes, keep that in mind that you're doing so much prep. By the way, the IC exam, you, you can take it at a Prometric test center. You can take it at the school. Do you remember where you took the test, Kai, when you took it? I took the test at schools. So you can physically take it at the school. You can take it online. So the IC has a couple of options with testing. Absolutely. All Are right. we good with questions? Okay, good. I think we knocked out quite a lot of them, and I answered to the best of my ability as well. Okay, so go ahead. Let's go into the math, and you'll notice this is going to be, guess, guess what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you it's easier or harder than SHSAT math. Yes, Manny, easier. Okay, let's keep going. Go ahead. All right, so they give you a sample question. We're not gonna put too much time on that, but what I want you guys to see is the number of questions compared to the amount of time that you have to answer them. So, got a calculator here. You have 36 minutes and you have 42 questions. You have like much, you don't have a whole minute to answer these questions. You have much less than a minute to answer these questions, which means you need to really, no, you cannot use a calculator. I was just doing that for the sake of calculating the time you guys have. You have much less than a minute to answer these questions. So it's really key that you pace yourself, that you get these easy questions done first and really quickly and you go forward. And if you are stuck on a question, if you're stuck on a math question, 
don't linger on it. You put a mark next to it and you go to the next one, you keep on going and then you come back to it at the end. But you can, you don't have any time to waste, okay? All right. Let's get started. So, question number one. Now, what they really want you to do, the fastest way to answer this first question, all right. Okay, so each square is worth five centimeters. So you have one, and it's each, each of them is worth five. Okay, all right. Um, so let's just count up, rather than go doing the traditional base times height, that's gonna take forever. It's gonna waste time and what we don't have what? We don't have time. So what you're gonna do, it's a really cool trick. Count up how many squares this shape takes over. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And each square is worth five centimeters, so you have eight times five. Eight times five gives you 40. Boom. Okay, number two. A jar contains five red balls, six blue balls, and eight white balls. Okay, first, whenever you see this, the first thing you do is add everything up, right? Okay, so you have five, six, eight, that gives you 19. That's, that's the total number of balls you have. All right, if one ball is chosen at random and then returned to the jar, and then a second ball is chosen at random. Okay, so here's the thing. When another ball, if the ball wasn't returned, it would be 19 times 18, because you're removing a ball from the total 19 you have. And there are two separate events, okay? But since you put the ball back, right, it goes from being 18 back to 19. Okay, um, and what is the probability that they will both be red? Well, how many red balls are there? There are five. And there will be five red balls for both times. So the answer is five nineteenths times five nineteenths. Okay, so yeah, that answer is D. Number three. Okay. So here's a little trick for this one. This is something that, um, so that what they want you to do is they want you to take the time, and this one you might actually have to if you, it might be best. Yeah, I know my battery's low, it's okay. 3.2 three times 10 to the seventh, what you do, write a three and two and add six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then you have 4.1 times 10 to the fifth, Whenever you have a point one or anything point zero or whatever, you have you take away one of the one from the exponent. So you have four point four one and then four zeros. One, two, three, four. Add them together, you get three, two. And then you notice that since this one is missing two zeros, it just becomes four one. But the easiest thing to do is they want you to write out and take all that time and waste all that time to do all of that work. The easiest thing to do is this. This number and this number are separated by two places. 4.1 is two places behind 3.2. So 3.2, and then because the 3.2 is two digits ahead or two places ahead, you can just write four one after that and add it together, okay? Don't, you don't have to write out and expand the full 10 to the power of seven and 10 to the power of five. Don't waste your time doing that. <coughs> and so we see the answer here as 3.241. And then you go with, because, you're adding them together, you're gonna go with 10 to the seventh because it's the largest one there. And also, if you were to write it out fully, it would have seven places. Um, because it, it's just, when you add a smaller to a larger, the larger number of places is what's maintained. So you always would add times 10 to the largest exponent. So it's C. Number four. Now this one, this one right here is a trick. This one is a real trick. 
Okay. Now, which one is not equal to two thirds? So when you divide, and then you have two thirds. I don't know what we'll start with this. One point one divided by one point five. Um, is equal to two thirds because it's just two thirds divided by it's two it's it's a it's a simplified version of that it's a lower version of two thirds so it's equal it has the same they're equal to each other same thing for two point four and three point six so they're all these two are equal they're equal to each other. Hey because guys, is this easier as they're going? And t tell me into the chat, easier or harder than SHSAT? And how you find, yeah, definitely is easier. Absolutely. And so because it's hard to really tell with it because it has decimals, what I do, you make it 24 and you make it 36. That simplified equals two thirds. Now, two thirds also, when you, when you divide two thirds, it does give you 0.6 and it keeps on going. So it is, it, it, that is also, sorry. That is also the correct answer. But 0 0.6666667 is not the right answer because if you divide two by three, they miss, they miss, it's 0. 0.666666 and then two more sixes and then a seven. So they tried to trick you by giving you a precise answer. It's actually, so we know that because all the, these, this is right, this is right, and this is right, that this has to not be the right answer. Number five, you have 8.05 plus 1.995 equals, times T equals T. Okay. Here's how we do this. You have to just, you have to get them to equal each other. So I always start with the easiest number and the easiest number to start with is always zero because it's the lowest number that you can start with. And when you multiply anything by zero, you get zero. So that cancels each other out. And if, and if, sorry, if you set T equal to zero, so T is equal to zero here and T is equal to zero here. So zero times this mess, which they want you to waste time by adding. You don't need to add it together. Um, and so to zero times that gives you zero and zero equals zero. Therefore, T must be zero. So these can't be right. So my tip, you start with the easiest number to start with to plug things in. Always plug in. If you don't know where to start, plugging in is the best way to go. Now, number six. Number six takes a little bit of thought, but for what value of x is the equation x plus three over three plus x equals zero true? Okay, we plug in a negative three. We get negative three plus three, which equals zero. And the same thing on the bottom, you get zero over zero. But no. It can't be zero because zero divided by zero is undefined. It's not zero. So it can't be the answer. When you plug in a zero, you get um, three over three. And three divided by three equals one, not zero. It can't be that. It can't be all real numbers if we already proved that two numbers don't work. All real numbers suggest that every number can, it gives you the answer of zero. If you plug in any number for x, you get zero, which is not true because we already limited, we already um, eliminated two. So the correct answer must be D because there are in fact no values that make this equation true. No value of x will make the equation equal zero. Okay. 
Number seven. Now this is another trick that they're trying to get you to do. What they want you to do, and I'll tell you exactly what they want you to do. They want to trick you by going root 25 plus root 144, which gives you five plus 12. See, they even leave it as an answer choice, but guess what? You cannot simplify things in that way. You always have to solve underneath first, and then you, can, you, can't, you can't do it this way. This is not how you work with square roots. So that is a big no-no. Don't let them trap you. You always have to do process of, I'm sorry, PEMDAS first. You have to work underneath, underneath this um, square root sign. So you got 25 plus 144, which gives you 169. This is why it's also really good to learn your square roots because square root of 169 is 13. 13 times 13 gives you 169. So the answer is 13. Now, if you only learn them up to 12 square roots, I mean, um, of, of, um, of numbers up to 144, you're kind of limiting yourself. So I would suggest learning the square roots, you know, a little bit farther than that, at least to like 20. So. So, yes, answer is 13. These which kids are champs. They all know their square roots, right? Who knows? You guys got it. Me. 12 squared, 144. What's 13 squared? Guys, show me 14 squared, 15 squared, 16 squared. I'll be very impressed. Seven, don't use the calculator. 17 squared, 18 squared. You guys got it. 19 squared, tw don't use the calculator, 20 squared, <laughs> 20 squared is easy. Yeah. Good, good job, Matthew. Good, Alexa. Good, Lizette. Everyone, good. No cheating. Okay, excellent. We totally got this. 12 squared is? 144. 13 Perfect. squared is? 169. Very good. 14 squared is? Two, 14 squared? 196. I, wait, wait, what's 14 squared? Anybody? I'm waiting. 15 squared? Thank yep, you, Carter. 25. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Matthew. What's 16 squared? Thank you, Madeline McCarthy. Thank you, Anish. Yep, 256. 17 Zero, squared? 100% no. 18 squared. Stop typing 184. You're confusing me. <laughs> yes, 324. Uh, 19 squared. 20 squared. Good. Let's keep going. Please, these yeah. kids are, these are, these, these children are going to ace the exam. They're totally. You guys have got it. So you're not going to let this exam trick you. Good, so, Lior. You got it. Let, we're closed up. Let's go. All right. Uh, Oops. Bonus question. 21 squared. Ooh. God, I don't even know. 21 squared. They don't know. They got it. Carter. 21 squared. Okay, good. Let's go. Next. All right. So there's no really, so this question is asking you what the median score is for this graph. Median is one of those things where you have to just write it out. There's no real easy way around it. So we label the numbers from smallest to largest. So let's just do it. Let's be nitty gritty and get it done. You've got 155, 160, 175, twice. Sorry for my atrocious handwriting. You guys have to work with me. Got 180. You have got 190. 195 twice, then you've got 200. We barely managed to fit this on the screen, but we got it. And then you just crisscross out. Cross, 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 cross. And you're left with these two right here. And so you add the two in the middle and you divide it by two. 
So you've got 180 plus 190 divided by two gives you 185. Right answer is C, 185. Next. Two machines are used to make the same kind of electronic parts. Machine A makes two times the number of defective parts as machine B. That right there, two times as much should have been a signal that you need to Why are you write it out as an equation. So machine A gives two, two times the amount of B. So that means that two A equals B. Now there were six parts made yesterday by both machines. So you have two A plus B equals six. How many parts did machine B make yesterday? Now, two times A plus B gives you six. I like to think of it this way. Um, if you divide six into three parts, six divided by three is two. You have A, you have really have A plus A plus B. So they're asking for two, three equal parts. Six divided by three is two, therefore, B must be two. But you can also test it by just simply plugging in the number. Two, so two times two is four, then four plus two is two, two sorry, sorry, four plus two is six. So that means that the answer must be A. All right. Number 10. What do you think of the question so far compared to SHSAT, guys? Feedback, feedback compared to school math, SHSAT math. Go ahead. So easy, yeah. Are you guys so happy that we're doing an IC review? Because you guys from, pub, especially the ones from public school, we really want you to see what the deal is with this private school entrance test. Yeah, exactly, Talia. Same concepts, but they ask it in a more simple way. But that's because these, um, the exams, I mean, the entrance process is also, it's, 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 it's competitive in a different way where the testing is not the only source of discovering how you get into the school, but also interviews have, and other things as well. Yeah, you, they, Kai, they interviewed you, right? Did they interview your parents also or just you? They interviewed me, they interviewed my parents, and they also looked at like my family, like my sister. So yeah, sometimes they'll even do home visits too. So they do, because they really want to make sure that you're a good fit for the school. So it's like, it's a really big deal. Um, yeah. the, and, and you also had to write essays, right? Didn't you have to submit essays for the application? I just want to remind you guys, um, and those of you with parents listening, like we help at Queller with the whole process. So like you will have some handholding as it's a little nerve wracking to work on the essays. We do help with that. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Andrew's asking, what are some of the interview questions they asked you? Do you remember? Do you remember what some of your interview questions were? Kai? Do you hear me? Mm. Uh-oh, I think her, do you hear me, Kai? Oh, no. She's not going to like that she got frozen, guys. <laughs> okay. Kai? Hello. It's okay. I just want all of you to remember that this is Zoom 5.0. This is our user experience at the moment. Um, some of the essay questions, while I assume she's going to try to log back in, some of the essay questions for, quell, uh, for um, schools, they, you know, they'll ask you about your background, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses. So they're going to ask you just questions about yourself and questions about your hobbies, your interests. We, we can help with that as well. Is Kai back in? I am back. I do not know what happened. I'm sorry, guys. It is really hard to navigate Zoom, but we are working with what we got. Okay. One of the kids is asking if we can go over the essay. Why don't we stop around 845 and we'll do some essay tips? Is that okay? So let's we go over do some more questions. I don't. Okay. Know. Yeah, sure. Ritu, I got you. Don't worry. We got this. All right, so let's go. Lisa has taken three tests so far in her biology class. Her scores on these tests are 93, 89, and 95. Underline those numbers because they're important. The score on her final exam will be counted twice in her mean. 
what is the lowest score that she can get on her final exam to have a mean score of no less than 93? Okay? Okay. So you're going to, let's just start off with, we can just start off with 93. All right, so you have 93 twice, including also the one that it was, that the, including her test score. So you have 93, 93, and 93 three times, and you have 89 and 95. And then you're gonna add them all up, which I'm not gonna wait too long. You're gonna get 463. You're gonna divide it by the number that are there to get the mean, two, three, four, five. And you're going to get a little bit less than 93, which means it can't be the answer. But the thing is, is that it's right at 92.6, which is super, super, super close to 93. It's super close, which means that the right answer most likely is the closest number to 93. And then in that case, it's 94. And to test it out, just do the same thing, except switch those two 93s for 94. So you have 94 plus 94 plus 93 plus 89 plus 95, add them up, divide it by five, and you get 93. And just so happens that number 10 is B. So yeah. Next question. Hmm. Mode, okay. They want you to really write out everything and that waste time. We don't need to write anything out for this question. Mode means most often. The number that is most often seen. Okay, so you have the number of pets and the number of students owning that number of pets. It's really easy to get confused by this, but we're looking at which number of pets is, which student, like how many students own the number of pets and we're looking at we're not focusing on the number of pets, but more so the number of students that own that number of, of pets. And the largest number there is six, um, is six. And six is mentioned, we have, yeah, okay. So we have six people that own one pet, which means that the number of pets that is most owned is one because six people have one pet as opposed to having, you know, so the most people, have, most people in the class have one pet. Okay. What is the LCM? So the least common multiple of eight N, six N M, and four N squared. <clears throat> um, excuse me? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think the last question was wrong. Go ahead. Why um, do you think the last question was wrong? Because there's six people that own one pet, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's... Okay, never mind. Never, sorry about that. Never mind. It's okay. It's okay. If you think something's wrong, please, like, feel free. No, because yeah, I, I thought I had to multiply yeah. two with, like, the number of people who own that number of pets by the number of pets. Yeah, so six and people in the class own one pet. And that's the most people that own, like, most, the most people out of that class own one pet. Which is why, oh, no, don't call them a fool. No, Thank you for asking Manny, that's not nice. Manny, take it. Take it back right now. Say sorry. Everyone, it's okay if we get something. Thank you, Ritu. If, if we get something wrong, like if it happens, it's fine because we have a lot going on. We're managing the chat box. We're managing the online. Like there, there's a lot, there are a lot of moving parts. So it's actually perfectly fine if you guys want to chime in. Okay, go ahead. All right. So the least common multiple of eight, six, and four so we do eight, it's gonna be 24. It's the least common number that they have in each other. So right off the bat, we can eliminate A and B. You guys know how to find LCM. The LCM, you just write out the multiples of eight, you know, like eight and then 16 
and 24. And yeah, okay, so we know that 16, 6 doesn't have 16, 6 doesn't have 8, and 4 doesn't have. So because 16 doesn't have those two, and they, all three of them have 24 as a multiple, 24 is least common multiple. Okay. <laughs> Now we look at the, now what the issue is now is, is, is in regard to the n squared and the m. So um, six squared. So what we do? Oh, sorry, someone is interested. Let's see. Yeah, the answer is d, and it's because the least common. So. While four doesn't have just one n, so we're not really looking at four's n squared, but we know that it is an n squared because n times n m gives you um, n n squared m, and that's the least common multiple between all of them. So four has one n that it can share, and eight has one n, and six has one n and an m. So when you multiply one n times n m, you get n squared m. And that's why D is the right answer. And that's why D is the least common multiple. You guys can't hear me? Can other people hear? Okay. Yeah, we hear. Leo, just try to turn up, make sure you're using the audio, okay? Just make sure you're plugging that in to use the audio. Go ahead. Absolutely. Okay. So is that okay? You guys got that one? I know it's a little bit tricky. Okay. All right, so no, it wouldn't be n cubed because the other ones, so okay, here we let's look at it this way. Four n squared, n squared is not seen on the other two numbers, right? You don't see eight n squared and you don't see six n squared m. And the, and the, and the number eight n and you don't see n squared. So they want you to get tricked up by thinking of it in terms of n cubed, but that's not even, it's not, it's not an answer because the, if the other, if the other, if no number has it, it can't be considered a multiple. There's no n squared found in any, all the all the numbers, so you wouldn't multiply n squared by n m because not all the numbers have n squared. But every number does have n, so you would multiply n times the n m. Thirteen. Now this one, this one right here is a question where they want you to waste your time. They want to waste your time because they want you to try and isolate the variable and get X or Y on its own. But guess what? There's an easy way, an easier way to do it. And guess what? All you have to do is look. 3X minus three equals something X minus something. It's the same similar structure. So we plug in the same number. Three, oops. Exactly. It is D. 3x minus 3. You plug in a, D, a 3 for x. I mean, sorry, a 3 for a y. You're going to get 3x minus 3. And so D is the answer. Really look at how you're spending your time. Sometimes if something is taking too long to answer, then that might mean that you're, you're answering it in the simply the wrong way. Um, and I guess we'll stop at 14, or do you want to, do you want me to do 14 or 15? Oh, you got, you don't understand? Okay, maybe I'll, I'll explain it. Um, really, they want you to just get these two equations equal to each other. Okay? Oh, wait, oh, wait. Yeah. yeah, they want you to get these two equations equal to each other. So the only way that you can get things equal to each other in this case, it's gonna take a lot of time if you try and isolate y by like dividing the whole thing by x, y, and it's gonna take a lot of time to simplify that equation. So if it's gonna take a long time to do something, then that means that it's typically not the right way to go about answering the problem. It's not the best or the smartest way to get it done. But I noticed that the two questions have a similar structure where it's something x minus another by a, a new a number um, and when you plug in a number your job is to just get them equal to each other so for example you plug in one 
one x minus one is not equal to three x minus three. So we know that one can't be the answer. But if you plug in a three, you get the same thing. You get three x minus three, which is why that's the answer. If they're equal to each other, okay. Okay, do you want to, do you want me to do, Francis, do you want me to do the next one or do you want me to go on to the- I think that, I think we're a little, just for time, can we just skim through the next few pages and just kind of identify what's being tested? So that's Absolutely. algebra, that's geometry. Let's just take a look at the question categories, okay? Yeah, we've got some algebra, we've got some geometry here. A lot of algebra is being tested. The graphs. Mm-hmm. Formulas. Nothing out of the box, right? I mean, you've seen this before. Can you zoom it out a little bit, the box and whisker plot? I just want the kids to see it, so we're good, okay? Yeah, so like basic statistics in algebra, nothing super crazy. So you'll notice the test starts, it's, a, it's an increasing order of difficulty as you keep going. So just keep that in mind. So the next section as we're going, let's keep going. Is there an essay sample or no? I'm just going to check, but I don't believe that I saw one, which is kind of Let's yeah, take a quick look at the score report just so they know like what a score report looks like. Is that okay? Do you want to show that the score of like how, how it's added up? Um, you no? can do that. Yeah, that's, that's fine if you want to kind of sure. walk them through that. So they just that's add fine. up your raw score um, and they'll add up everything. Um, and it's really out of your raw score. This is for, oops. So you, they'll do your raw score for each test you're reading in your math. It's at a 30. So if you get, yeah, so they have a range of, 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 what, of what a perfect score is. It could be between a 939 reading or 909. It depends on the test because they do it on a curve. So it's a little bit different. So it, it, it is subject to change. And then the math is out of 42. Um, and then from there, what they'll do is, if you look at, this is just a sample report, um, but she'll, they'll show you what your score was out of all the sections. And take a look at the top. You see where, can we like zoom in on the top where it says test profile? So look at the sections, verbal reasoning, reading comp, quantitative and math. So each section has a score. And then you'll have a scaled score, for instance, and they'll tell you here, I think it's pronounced stay nine, stay nine score. It's a one to nine. So obviously nine is gonna be like the golden goose, right? So that's what yep. we're aiming. So just keep that in mind. It'll give you a range. And then yeah. they have an analysis. Let's keep going under that. And this is, if you guys wanna take a screenshot of this, you could also just so that you have it on your records. And they tell I'll you what- Plus means that you got the answer correct. Minus means that you didn't get it right. S is skipped and N means that you weren't able to finish the test or you weren't able to answer those last couple of questions. Um, and they'll go through, they, they actually divide, they show you which question, which, which questions fall under which style. So for example, they have synonyms, single word response, paired word response. Those are three different types of questions for verbal reasoning and so on and so forth. And they'll, they'll really give you a thorough breakdown of how you did under each of those, so you can really, really target your studying specifically to what you want to know. Sorry, someone has, one has a question. Would you like to ask your question? Please feel free to do, to, do so, Anish. How do they know if you skip the question and if you didn't reach them? If you skip a question, it's in the middle of like the test. So like if you are on, if it's a question, test is through one through 40 and you skip one, like you skip question number 10, you don't do number 10, that's called skipping. But if you're at the end and you, if you're at, if you finish at number 39 and you have the last couple of questions that you didn't get to get to, they're the last questions on the test and they're blank, they'll count those as not reached. Um, Anish, what is your question? Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, here's, here's a sample essay question, guys. So you, I guess we can get into that. Okay, Anish, well, I'm glad I answered your question. So choose a subject that appeals to you. 
Choose subjects about which you know a great deal. Identify two or three important qualities about the subject you choose. Example, two qualities of a good teacher are expertise and organization. Write about two or three reasons why you choose the subject that you choose. My favorite author is William Shakespeare because he vividly recreates history and he writes humorously. Um, okay, so. What we're looking at are typical upper level IC questions. So if you could read that out, Kai, that would be awesome. I just read it out, but, oh. Yeah, I just posted the new ones that oh, I absolutely. just sent you. Schools offer many extracurricular opportunities. Describe one extracurricular opportunity that you would like to pursue. Assignment, you have 30 minutes to plan and write an essay on the assigned topic. Do not write on another topic. An essay on another topic is unacceptable. Please write this essay topic on the first few lines of your answer sheet. Topic, what three words would you use to describe yourself and why? Assignment, you have 30 minutes to plan. Now write on a topic, okay, yeah. So, so, so you guys have the essay and, um, you know, there, we can do some, we have a writing class at Queller, plug, plug, plug. <laughs> you can absolutely definitely join it. In. We have a very nice writing class where we do go over essay prompts such as this, and you can definitely, um, you know, dig deeper by writing. And these are similar to college essay prompts. So you can keep using this again. Okay. So keep that in mind as an opportunity as well. Okay. Um, absolutely. What I wanted to go over with you, um, if you guys could ask Kai, just some, I guess if you could just give some tips and information, I think it's really important, everyone, to give, um, you know, let's do one thing at a time, okay, we'll do one thing. As they're, as they're typing out questions, which we'll get to, I do want to, you know, sincerely say thank you for this time and this opportunity that you're giving everyone. So at Queller Prep, we're going to be running um, an IC summer class. We're running an SHSAT summer class. If you're doing SHSAT, you have to do just a little bit of IC. If you're doing IC, you have to do a lot of SHSAT. And remember, we're also running a blended class, which is going to be IC and SHSAT. And Kai wants a job. So, you know, it's really important that each person listening today mentions, you know, that we have our tutoring program running all summer and we have tutors who are available and we're figuring out Zoom and technology and we're getting better and better every time. So it's important that you know that, you know, we do want the staff to work. We want the kids to learn and remember that, Kai is all the way in the Caribbean right now, and she's still, I think, aced it, right? I think we should give her an A+, plus, considering um, <laughs> how you. far away you are, how you're really just, you know, maneuvering the technology and you, the Zoom updates. So thank you so much. You've been amazing. Thank and you. we have a couple of questions. Um, let's answer, let's just do a few minutes, Kai. Let's answer some questions that people are posting awesome. right now. Go ahead. So, uh, so how big, the essay, is the essay part of the test? The essay... I believe is optional, but we take optional as you need to do it. Optional, it's always another chance to show your skills, so we definitely take opportunity of that essay. So I count it as part of the test for me. Um, does the school see the number of times that you have taken the ISCE? What I understand, you can, you would send your specific score report to the school. So I don't know, I believe that they don't see the new test, the test, all the tests that you've taken, but rather your, um, your, your, um, but rather the, the test score that you choose to send. Next question. You guys should check the website because the rules are probably going to adapt to the changing times Absolutely. as well. So That's we'll what that it was mind. for me, but things definitely change. I took the test like seven years ago and also again four years ago. So things definitely change. So please do, again, check and do your own research. How big is the essay? Okay, typically I would always try and stick with a five paragraph format. You wanna make sure that your essay is longer than like a paragraph and you wanna make sure it's longer than a page. <laughs> so we definitely wanna make sure that we are writing thorough answers. Ah, uh, Francis has a little bit of a guess for us. <laughs> so um, yeah. But you want to make sure that your essay response is really thorough. They, you know, if you're writing an essay for school, they don't want to see you write two sentences and submit it. So really giving a nice organized response, I always say one, um, 
if, if since this prompt that they were talking about Ted says, it depends on the prompt really. If you need to mention two different arguments, you write two body paragraphs. If you need to mention three different arguments, you would make three body paragraphs. But it's important that you really do have your intro, your bodies, and your conclusion. The number of bodies depends on the question. Is this essay similar to the Hunter test? I have not taken the Hunter test, so unfortunately, I am not super clear, but Francis, are it's, you it's, sure? It's, it's, it's easier, so it's easier than the test. Michelle, say hi, Kai, say hi, Kai. Hi, Kai. Hi. <laughs> This is your future student. That's it. Absolutely. Kai, you better get this one into 15 colleges too. But um, yeah, the Hunter essay is a descriptive essay. It's much longer and harder. It's a harder, harder essay. So the upper level IC prompt is actually going to be easier. Okay, go ahead. What questions do they ask me at my interview? You know, here's what I say. Here's what I think. Mm -hmm. Spending your time pondering every single question that they're going to ask you is not the best way to... To, to plan your, your preparation for these interviews because they can really ask you anything that they want. Any, they could ask you any question in the world. But what I will say is this, know yourself, be able to talk about who you are and what you like. like and I think the most important question that they will most likely ask you is to in introduce yourself. Be able to introduce yourself, speak about who you are, what you like, um, why you're applying, know a bit about the school, Having that knowledge allows for a conversation. See, the interview interviews go wrong when the, it's more when it stays to be an interview. You want your interview to be a conversation. For example, my college interview for UPenn um, was not. I wouldn't call it an interview because I kind of led the conversation and kept it going, so that we ended up speaking about books that we liked for an hour. You know, when when you when you are able to have a genuine conversation with someone. And, and, and talk about yourself and, and, not, and not make it so that they're berating you with questions and twist the conversations that twist the interview so that it becomes a conversation where you get to learn about the school and vice versa. That's when you're doing well. Oh, I have 26, 27 messages. Jesus. <laughs> they're all thank you. Um, um, I took the essay seven years ago and not four. No, I took the essay both seven years ago and four years ago because I was going to apply for a different high school, but I ended up staying at Dwight. And I also have to get into Dwight. Kai, we all want to say thank Kai, you, um, okay? Say thank, thank you. Thank you. I hope you have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Everyone, thank you gonna, all so much. I'm going to do something really cute. I'm going to take everybody off mute, and we're all going to say thank you to you, okay? Ready? Bear with me as I figure this out. Hold on. I'm figuring it out. Mute, how do I do this? Oh, you can keep answering questions as I'm figuring this out. Hold on, okay, so I have mute. Uh, can you take multiple tests in the fall? Um, from what I understand, you are allowed to take three different tests per year. So I don't, I don't think it would be advantageous to quickly try and use up your three tests all in one season. I would study, if you get, your, if you get the score that you like, great, but the next season, you need to go ahead. And anyways, you can only do one person. I can't, okay, can everyone do something very cute? Because Zoom 5.0 is not yeah, letting yeah, me do Next question. This. Everyone, can you guys, let's go off mute as a group. Uh, I don't see that feature. So can someone, um, can, can everyone go off mute and let's all as a group say thank you to Kai, You Ready? guys can all unmute yourself. Kai, you. let's say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. are so informative. Isn't Kai a superwoman? She's you super power. And I love you so much. I, I hope you have a good time. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. You did so well. Thank That's you, Kai. Hi, future student. Okay, you did so well. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank is you. She the best? Uh -huh. She is the best, right? She's the best of the whole wide world of America. Oh, thank yes. you so much, Aww. everybody. You guys did so great. Okay, Kai, we want to thank you. It's already 8.59, so we should uh, close you. up, wind down. Thank you so much. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. And if you have any further questions, feel please feel free to contact Francis. Um, and Queller. <laughs> Thank you.
We're blowing you a kiss to the Caribbeans. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a long trip, okay? All right, and thank you for this time, two hours. And guys, remember, there was prep time, so you prepared for an hour. So, and Kai and I had a meeting before this to test the technology for an hour. So we've spent quite a lot of time bonding together, <laughs> okay? Thank you. Um, will there be another webinar? So we're running a class, but I think, Kai, is it fair to say we're going to run a middle-level one and maybe a lower level? We're going to run different Absolutely. samples. We want all the kids to see what the sample um, versions are, okay? So that's it. We're going to finish up. Kai, you were like super A-plus trooper. You are a powerhouse. You got into 15 I hope you plus have colleges. A good day, and I hope you have a good day. And I hope you have good and say, I and love you, Kai. You, you are so good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so with that being, yeah, that's my little mini me. Do you see the resemblance? Look at this. <laughs> Mommy. Okay, so Mommy. everyone. Mommy. Uh, oops, as I'm not ready for this part of the video. Thanks. Okay, so everyone, as I was saying, we're very proud of you. Thank you, Kai. And um, it's a shame Michelle's not doing my makeup at the beginning of the session because it probably would have helped when we started. All right, thank you, Kai. You are the best. Okay, enjoy. Awesome. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. I'm going to end it now. Have a great evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.